All right, guys, now that we have our motor installed, I'm hoping today we can install our batteries. I have two of them, a 30 amp hour and a 50 amp hour battery in this box right here. So we're gonna pull it out and see what we're working with. So my idea is that I'm gonna put the smaller 30 amp hour battery inside the frame. Now the only problem is that when I put it inside the frame, I don't want these cables right here being smashed against the, the frame. So I gotta figure out a way where I can put this in there and give it some space. Okay, I tried fitting this in the frame and it will fit, but when I made these battery bags, I put too much foam in there. So I'm gonna have to undo this battery bag and take out some of the foam. So I just took this panel off. This is where they house the controller. And I was able to pull out all the wiring, which is right here. I might sell it for really cheap. We'll just give it away. I'm not sure yet. And then once I took that panel out, I cut a hole right there so that I could pull out this. This is what connects into the battery and it connects to a XT90 connector. I just put a little duct tape there. But yeah, now I can sell the battery and they'll have this cable or harness to connect to the battery. When the stock Anioki bike arrived, it came with a bunch of these, it's like styrofoam, but it's much harder, much more dense. And I knew I liked them a lot, so I kept them kept bigger pieces of them too. So I just cut these small pieces right here and I'm gonna place it right there because there's a groove and I don't want the battery sitting on that groove because that could because that could damage it. And it works perfectly because I was able to cut it small enough so that the battery wiring can be fed through up here. There's a little gap so nothing's gonna be squished. I feel like I should duct tape right here. There's a little groove right here. It's kind of sharp. I don't want it digging into my battery, but that's how it looks with one battery so far. I'm just gonna add a few layers of duct tape to pad that groove right here. Now that the first battery's in there, I'm just gonna Velcro strap it down. And then on the second battery, I'm gonna be using ratchet straps. It's pretty solid, it's in there. Like it barely even moves. But when you're riding and there's a bunch of vibration, it might wiggle around. This bad boy ain't going nowhere. I actually just removed the battery because I'm gonna try to remove this piece so that I can push the battery upwards a little bit and I can fit the controller right here. That'd be the perfect spot for it. All right, so I'm gonna have this controller resting on this battery over here. And then I'm gonna put this bigger 50 amp hour battery stacked on top and resting against the controller. So originally I was gonna install this battery and parallel it to the second battery. But first I gotta take care of this far driver and hook everything up to it. Because if I put this battery on top of the far driver right there, I won't be able to get into there. It's gonna be very difficult. Well, it's gonna be impossible to hook everything up. So we might just run this bike off of um, 30 amp hours at first set everything up and then parallel this guy. So we got the phase wires hooked up to the far driver. And next I'm gonna put in the battery terminals. This is what we use to parallel the, the batteries. So it's a Y connector, but I'm only gonna be using one of the batteries for now. I'm just gonna check and see if everything's running smoothly and fine. And then once that's all, once all that's set up, then we'll connect the last, then we'll connect the second battery. All right, we just finished putting the phase wires and the battery terminals on the far driver. 
battery's not connected yet. Before I connect it, I'm going to plug in all the the connectors that I need. The homie Johnny made us this wire harness that I'm gonna be needing. And the only reason why I need this is because I'm gonna be reusing my half twist throttle and my my stock brake levers that already has the motor cut off. So you don't need this and you can actually buy a plug and play harness from NB Power. I think they sell it for like maybe 200 and they give you the throttle, the brake levers, some other stuff that you might need. This was just to save me money. Johnny was a real homie. So I got everything hooked up and it turns on. The screen turns on, the voltmeter shows. My far driver is making that beeping sound and from what I know, I'm supposed to tune it. But before all that, you're supposed to connect to the far driver via Bluetooth. I keep trying to connect, but there's nothing pops up when I go into the app. So I'm pretty stuck right now. I think there might be something wrong with my far driver. I gotta ask some people. If not, I have to ask my supplier. Man, I really wish I could have done more today, but there's nothing you can do if your phone doesn't want to connect to the controller. All right, today's a new day and I switched to my phone because I don't have my camera on me, but I wanted to see if there was anything wrong with the motor. I hooked up everything I need for the Sabaton just to test the motor and we got power. So here's the throttle. Yeah. So at least I know the motor's not the problem. And check this out. I contacted my supplier for the far driver NB power and I sent him my model number and he actually said that he sent me the wrong one he said he sent me the wrong one because I ordered a far driver with a built-in Bluetooth but he sent me one that needs a Bluetooth dongle so he's gonna send me a little Bluetooth that will plug into I believe it's this one and then I'll be able to connect my phone yeah I'm happy that we got power, the motor works. Now I just gotta wait for the, the little Bluetooth connector. All right guys, thanks for staying with me. Thanks for watching. I'll be in the comment section if you guys wanna ask anything. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.